Good morning, Standard Mathematics. Thank you for joining me once again as we are going through our next lesson in the probability topic. To start us off, here is a warm up flashback question. This is from the 2013 Standard Maths Hack to Say paper. It was the first question. You've got four events and you need to pick which of the following is the least likely to occur. Could you please pause the video and um, try and figure out which of the four is least likely? All right, so the easiest way to handle this one is just by quickly calculating the four probabilities and just seeing which one is the smallest. So if we start with the first one, tossing a fair coin and getting heads, well, that's an easy one, that's a half chance. And I'm gonna write that as a decimal, 0 0.5. Okay, you'll, you'll see why at the end why I'm using decimals for these. Next one, rolling a standard six-sided die and obtaining a three, well, that is one of the six faces. So your probability would be one out of six. Uh, but we're going to use that as a decimal, which is 0 0.16666 repeat. That's what that little dot above the 6 means. It means repeating 6s. Okay, so the way you can get that is on your calculator, you can type in 1 over 6 and press the equals button, and it should give you this decimal, okay? For the next one, selecting G from the alphabet. So G is one of the 26 letters, so the probability is 1 out of 26, which as a decimal looks like this. 0.038, and then a few more decimals. All right, and the last one, winning first prize in a raffle of 100 tickets, and you have four of the tickets. All right, so you've got a four out of 100 chance. Okay, four of the tickets out of 100 are yours. So four out of 100 as a decimal is 0.04. Okay. Now that you have all those, you can see you got 50% here, about 16, 17% here, You've got 4% here, and this is a bit less than 4%, so C is the least likely. All right, so today's lesson is focusing on ranges of probability, so types of answers you can expect and how we can use those facts to uncomplicate some questions, I would say. So we're going to start off with the key points of the lesson. So... All probabilities are always going to range from zero, which represents impossible, to one being certain, okay? Whenever you calculate a probability in this topic, if you get an answer that's not between zero and one, you've probably done something incorrect, and you might have to go through again and see what that is, okay? So it's kind of a spectrum of probability from zero to one, which is why we're always using fractions or decimals or percentages, because they're easy ways of representing numbers between zero and one. And the next fact is that the sum of all probabilities in the sample space is always one. So if we translate that into plain English, it basically means if you sum up all the possibilities in terms of probability, you're always gonna get certain. Okay, so a simple example could be a dice roll. You've got six outcomes, and all the outcomes have a one in six chance. And so when you add those up, one six plus one six, do that six times, you get six six, which is one. Okay, so. The probabilities of all your options should always plus together to give you one because that's a certainty, okay? So we're gonna apply this with our first example. We have a bag of clothing containing shirts, scarves, and socks. So we've got three outcomes, shirts, scarves, and socks. The chances of picking out a shirt are three in 10, but the chances of picking out a sock is one in three, okay? Find the probability of picking a shirt or a sock. Okay, so if you told me there was a one in six chance, if, we, if we're talking about a, a dice roll again, for a simple example, if you told me there is a one in six chance of rolling a two, and there's a one in six chance of rolling a five, what are the chances you roll a two or a five? Well, that's two out of six. It's the one six plus the one six, okay? So sometimes in probability, when you wanna find the probability of this or this, quite often you can just do this, plus this, okay? So if we, if we wanna find the probability of getting a shirt or a sock, we can just do the probability of the shirt plus with the probability of the sock, okay? So we can just do 3 tenths plus 1 third. On our calculator, it'll tell us it is 19 out of 30, okay? So this is the probability of getting either a shirt or a sock. These two individually together makes 19 out of 30, okay? And now for part B, we're finding the probability of picking a scarf. So to answer this, we're gonna use the fact that all the probabilities in the sample space, our three options, all add together to give 
one. Okay, so shirt or sock or scarf is a certainty. That's why it's 100% or one. Okay, we know the probability of the shirt. We know the probability of the sock, so we can put those in there. So we've got three tenths plus one third plus our unknown. Probability of a scarf equals one. In part A, we already did the three tenths plus the one third. That was 19 over 30. And now you've got to say to yourself, what sort of completes this pattern? All right, what goes with 19 over 30 plusing to give one? If you're good with your fractions, you can see straight away that this needs to be 11 out of 30. Or maybe you prefer equations and you can take the 19 over 30 and subtract it from the other side. Okay, either way you should get 11 over 30 as your answer. Okay, the reason that works is because 11 over 30 plus three over 10 plus one over three equals one. Okay, the three options always sum together to give a certain. Okay, if there's any questions about that, please let me know. Some people do find that a bit confusing at first. But if that makes sense, we can try another one. All right, this one, we have a stack of Uno cards, which of course are always red, blue, green, or yellow. We're ignoring the, the wild cards for now, I suppose. And a card is drawn at random. The probability of a red is 0.15 or 15%. Probability of blue is 40% and probability of green is one out of 10, which would be 10%. All right, find, first of all, the probability of red or green. If you think you know what you're doing, as always, pause the video and have a go first. It's always a good option. But let's work through them, okay? Probability of red or green. If we use the trick from the last one, we can do probability of red plus with probability of green. Okay, this or this is usually this plus this. All right, you can leave your answer as a decimal or a fraction or a percentage, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna go with a fraction, one over four. All right, now for the next one, find the probability of a yellow which is not given to you in the question. So again, we're gonna to have to use the fact that red plus blue plus green plus yellow should be equal to one, okay? So if you're really clever, what you can do is you can work backwards here and say, well, if I start with one as my certain probability, I take away red, I take away blue, and I take away green, logically that must leave me with the leftover, which because there's only four options, has to be the fourth option, which is yellow. Okay, so we're gonna do this one really clever. We're gonna work backwards and we're gonna do our certainty, take away red, take away blue, take away green, put that through our calculator and it will say something along the lines of 0.35 or you could say 35%. Okay, so 15%, 40%, 10% and 35% all go together to make 100%, which is one, okay? All right, next one's a quick trick question, probability of purple. Uh, the question doesn't mention purple, and if you play, you know there isn't purple cards, so that is a probability of zero. It's an impossibility. And for the last one, we're doing blue, yellow, or red, so we use the same trick from the first question, red or green. So we'll do probability of blue plus probability of yellow plus probability of red, and we'll get our answer. So we'll do blue from the question, 40%, Yellow from part B, we figured that out, it was 0 0.35. And red, again, from the question is 0 0.15. Putting that all together, we get 90%. Which makes sense because green was the only one left out and green was 10%. So if you add on the green, you get 100%. Okay? All right, and today's bonus question, the reason I made this question is I want to know in the comments, your opinions, can you play a plus four on a plus two or vice versa, okay? I have my opinion, I know the answer, I wanna hear yours, and if it's wrong, I can berate you. So I look forward to that. Let me know in the comments, yes or no, can you play a plus four on a plus two? So I'll do it for today. I'll put this exercise up on your Google Classroom. Um, green are the mandatory questions, uh, blue are the recommended ones, and the red one is a bit of an optional challenge if you feel like you're really getting this and you wanna push yourself. Okay, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys later.